Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, it says in the Amplified Bible, If any man has ear to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. And he said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides you will be given to you who hears. Amen. In the New King James Version says that if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hears, more will be given. Amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I have to, I come with a disclaimer. Uh, so I have to say the disclaimer before I speak. Kutwa kandi shumailandia shoutis. And shoutis it too. Amen. Amen. Nice and cushioned. So don't allow the tone of my voice to cause your ears not to hear. That was my disclaimer. I have to say that because people say, Yo! which is the word of God. Amen. There is a problem in, in how the church hears the word of God. Amen. We are living in the, way, in the time when we have in Dr. his selective hearing. Amen. You find that when the word of God is released, there are things in the word that we take and we believe and we are quick to accept and receive. And there are things in the word of God that we feel like, not for me. Amen. Like Umama, when she said that, I said, let's stand. There are people who just don't hear. Yeah, Ivane? When you speak, the word of God is released. It's like a sound. It's not like words. Kauma mamela is sound like if somebody is speaking outside with a loudspeaker and when a message, ape I don't know if you do that, ape kaelicha, but sometimes in our territory when there's something that needs abasali to be able to hear, there's a person who announces in a loudspeaker and then you can hear a sound. But for you to be able to hear the words, you have to be attentive and you have to position yourself and you have to prepare yourself to be in a place where there is stillness for you to be able to hear. Amen. And sometimes, disinterested. Even if the message is a popular loudspeaker, is very important. If you are disinterested, you will not be able to hear what is being said. Amen. In the church these days, we've got, uh, we have come to a place in Abazola where we, we choose the word we believe and the word we hear. And Utata yesterday was speaking about the church as the, the bride, the family, the body, uh, and all the temple and all that. But we, and he talked about the church being an army. If we can see that in the church, we have been trained to have intimacy with God. Amen. As the bride. Where when we come into the presence of God and it's time for worship, we know how to engage that muscle. Amen. The intimacy. We cry before the presence because we understand what it is like. We have accepted it. And we have been taught of it. And we have been trained in it. So it's, it becomes easier when we sing a love song to our God and we tell him how much we love him. 
and he touches our hearts and there's that intimate moment between us and God. We are able to, to just flow within us. Amen. Amen. We understand also the church as a family because when we come to the church, we understand that there's fellowship, there's love, there's unity, there's taking care of one another and all those things. But when it comes to the church as an army, we have a problem. Because we don't understand militancy. Amen. As the church, we don't understand what it is like to become militant. And now, when the word about the church as an army, being missional, being, being, being forceful, because that's who we are as an apostolic people. We are pioneers. We go first. Amen. We do things first. So we, we are always on the offensive side, not on the defensive side. Hallelujah. So you find that when we talk about the church as an army, the church has an issue with being trained for battle. Because it is not easy to be trained for battle. The, the tone is not the same. Because when we talk about intimacy, when we talk about family, when we talk about, you know, the body, we are soft, we are loving, we are tolerant, we are understanding, we are, but when we talk as an army, there is a commander. In the family, there is a father, there's a mother, I'm not going to go back there. Amen. And then in the, in the house, there's a mother and the father. And then when we look at the church as the bride, there is a bride and there's a bridegroom. When we talk about the, the church as the body, there is a head. Amen. But when we talk as a, for a church as a, an army, there is a commander. Hallelujah. There is somebody who is giving instructions, not suggestions. And now this is where we are as the church. When we talk about the church as an army and we are putting the militancy and we are training you to strong, fierce, to be an army, it seems like we have removed everything else. We are no longer loving. We are no longer caring. And now people have got an issue. That Kawa used to be loving. Kawa used to smile. Umfundisi used to hug us. Ngoku stalba masambe. Sio planta. Abasastandi by us daughter. You know, and all those things. And we must follow. We must follow people. We want to follow God. We are, called, we are called to become the disciples of Christ. We follow Christ. Amen. Because Christ has put people in front of us to follow. People in front of us to lead the way. People in front of us to help us to be able to walk away in a certain way. Amen. But we find that as the church, our ears have become dull to hear certain things. Because it's a state of the heart, you see. Because the church has come to a place where we want to hear things that pleases us. We want to hear things that motivate us. We want to hear things that are speaking to us. But the truth is that we are called to invade territories. We are called, you know, the book of Acts, when you look at the book of Acts, when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to give the Holy Spirit upon you. He said to wait until you receive the promise. And the promise is the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, he came with power. Amen. And that power was not the power for us to feel good like we are doing right now in the church. Because the power of the Holy Spirit has become the power that the church has put in closed doors, in closed buildings of the church where we feel good, we have good bumps, we get healed, we get delivered, we get, you know, Dante Mandi, Yam Notiko, Nanobawo. It's not about Mnanobawa anymore. Amen. Because we must mature. Hallelujah. 
we must come to a place of maturity. And when we mature, it's no longer about you. It's about somebody else. Amen. It's no longer about me receiving. Even if I don't receive, I become a tool that God can use for somebody else to be able to receive. Hallelujah. So, Tina, we wait for God to fulfill his in those Funa city and forget that the world out there needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Because the laborers do not understand their mandate that they are sent outside to go and win the lost at any cost. Hallelujah. So we don't understand that we are called to go to the world. We are called to go and get people saved. We are called not just to sit, but we are called to go. We are called not just to feel good, but to go, even if even if God did not answer what you were praying for, that does not stop you from becoming a person who goes out and tells others about Jesus Christ. Amen. So the problem as a church is that we, we come to a place where our hearts are not ready to receive hard truths. Amen. We always want nice things. That's why we are not even planted. You know? When you look at a pot plant, pot plant. When you look at a pot plant, this thing, a pot plant when you look at a pot plant, this thing, it is not, you, you cannot keep it in the house and it lives for the whole year. Because it's not planted. It is just decorating. But if it was planted outside where the roots can go deep into the ground, then it can be able to flourish and it can be able to produce fruit. If it was an apple tree, it would be able to produce fruit. Amen. Amen. And it will produce fruit whether there's rain in Cape Town or there's no rain in Cape Town. But because it is planted and there's, the roots go, the deeper the roots, the roots will find the, the moisture that is out under the ground. Amen. And it will be able to flourish. But you find that Singa Mazalwani, we've got options. Ne? We've got options of, of churches. So we don't allow ourselves to be planted in a house. To be planted in a church. You know, when Jesus spoke to his disciples and he spoke about the communion, a simple thing called the communion, that this is my body and this is my blood. You must eat this body of mine and you must drink my blood. The others were looking at him and like, yo, ah, dalasimbon, abafarasi, shem, abafunum, bulale, lalise. Koning, aging, alonfo. He's too ambitious. Yeah, oh, too much. Goga is taking it to another level. We must eat his body. We must drink his blood. Aye. And they decided to leave him. And he said to the 12, do you also want to leave? But because the 12 were planted in Christ, were not the fans of Christ, they understood his heart more than his sayings. You know, the Bible says that, the, the, it, when you read the, the, the book that you have read, read, it shows that there are things that Jesus spoke. And the, the, when he spoke about the, the, the parable of the soil, when he the, the spoke about the fact that, you know, some seeds fall on good ground, some on thorns, some... And, and the disciples were like, but why do you speak with people in parables? And he said, it is not given for them to understand the mysteries of heaven. So if Ungum Zalwane ongeko rooted, ongeko grounded, when every time ka uva ili it will always be too hard to understand. Because your heart is not ready to even hear the truths of the word, the deep and the secret things of God. Amen. Because there isn't as it takes in a pina. 
Because there are things that Jesus spoke to the multitudes, but there are things that he spoke to disciples. And when he spoke to the multitude, he spoke in parables because they, 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 they needed storytelling. But the disciples needed to hear the true word, the, the raw word as it is. Because even with the, the parable of the sower, he says that, you know, this, this is what the, 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 the wayside, he speaks about the, 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 the stony um, ground and he speaks about the good grounds. But to the disciples, he explains it further. Because their ears are ready to hear. And ukuva akutetinje uku mamela. Ukuva kuteta uku understand and to obey. Amen. We see that you have heard by the things that you do. I'm going to repeat that again. We see that you have heard by the things that you do. Not by the things that you know. Because in Amazon, we know a lot. We know the word. We quote the word. We, 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 know, we, we can write it line upon line. We know the verses. We can even say where they are, give the right address of where the scripture is. But you find that the word is just the word that we know. It's not the word that we have become. Because our ears are not listening for knowledge and for obedience. Amen. So we need to come to a place where when the word is released, it comes to the people who are grounded who are not going to say, this word now is tough. The things that they are teaching are not the things that we came here for. Amen. Amen. When we come to church for into to hallelujah. If I can tell into the I can tell you Because we feel like God owes us something. God has to give us something. It's all about us. Can I tell you today, you are not that important. Amen. You are not that important. The things that you want are not going to give him glory. The things that you want are not, some of them, they even take you away from the faith. When you have received them, they take you away, from, they become your God and your idols. You start worshipping them instead of worshipping the living God. Because the motive of your being in the presence of God is not for him, it's for you. Amen. So God needs us to change from being a self-centered church that comes for ourselves but to come for him and for his kingdom and advancing his kingdom and making sure that we hear what is in his heart and we do what is in the heart of God so that the people can be changed, lives of people can be transformed and lives of people can be touched, generations can be transformed, people can find purpose again, people can find the reason to live again People are depressed. People have nowhere to go. They have no hope. People are confused. People are in pain. They've got uh, mental issues because they have no identity. They identify themselves by the things of the world. But there is an identity that we find in Christ Jesus. When he says, you are mine and I am your God. You are my people. Where you feel like uh, it doesn't matter whether I've got... Uh, I'd, as long as I've got Jesus, I've got everything that I need. We need to come to that place, Bazalani. Amen. Because God has got a great plan for humankind. Oh, now when he came to the presence of the Lord, Elila, Elila, Lumtana, Baupeni, Naunomtana, Namnantana. Oh, God, like, so what? You are not the only woman who does not have a child. You are not the only woman who cares a law, Yogba, Akanabantuan. But the word of the Lord at that time was scarce. People went to the temple daily to bring offerings, uh, yearly to bring offerings and to come before the Lord as a ritual. It's very amazing that people were not aware about Tikwakasa 30. 
That is scary, Bazalwan. Can you be in a church? And uti kwa ka se kwa gulonda waka tetu kute kwa ka. Neli zoeli tetuwa yu is just ritualistic. Asi iva upa aa. Umni ninda wake kwa gulenda upa di yeli. Year after year we go to the temple. You understand upa? The sacrifices were made for the redemption of people's sins. So bebe si ya paya na ukuzi ba kalele. Ba kalele bona. Na bantua na babo. Ukuzi zono zabe zolele. Bebe nga katela nga utitul tetu tin. Liti ni kebo lika tiko ng Israel. Israel begeti as long as I do it due diligence. Then that the the bare minimum, then it's fine. But the word of the Lord was not there. Because of the priesthood, Eli. You understand? So people were just coming and going. And God was like, I need something. I need to speak. I have no vessel. I need to speak, but there's nobody who can become my mouthpiece to tell this generation what is in my heart. Can we look at the women and the, and the men and the young people in GNCC, Kailish, and say, God, speak through me to this generation that is dying all around us. Can we become the mouthpiece that can be able to hear what God is saying? And be able to understand what saith the Lord. So that we can be able to release the word of the Lord in season. The word of the Lord for this generation. So until Uhana says to God, give me a child and I will bring the child to you in your temple. That is when God, and he didn't say a child. He said, give me a son. Uhana was specific that he, she wanted a son. That she can plant back into the house of the Lord. To become that which God needed at that time. And God answered her and gave her a son. But how many of us who, when God answers us, we forget? Can you imagine? Oh, Hannah, after I've been in the house, I've been in the house. I've been in the house. So every year, I've been in the house. Now, Pataba, Konam, Tizahama, and Loam, Siban Benning, his son, and Taseka, and Dibonisuba, Nam, Nam, Yakwazuzala. But she remembered the promise. She remembered the covenant that she made with God and said to God, Here is the child. What to go in like Mandilin, then Dimuina from the breast. After that, Tizakum Zisa, a templain. Amen. And what happens is that. Jehovah about Samuel as a, as a temple in Ekula. She, he did not know the voice of the Lord because the voice of the Lord was scarce. The only person who could hear God before Utikwati because of the state of his house. The state of his house. Gu Eli. So U Eli, because Beganga was a discipline, Amanda Namake. Emutata o o o ngakwazuku nikum tetu. Wayenza utiko bama katul angasatet. But he's the only one who heard, who knew the voice of the Lord. So that U Samuel ka elele epsu kutiko embizeti Samuel Samuel. Wayaku Eli, because U Samuel knew the voice of Eli. As a mentor. Amen. He did not yet know the voice of God because God was quiet until Samuel, the one who was sown into the kingdom, was able to grow enough to be able to hear. And just imagine, Ukuba Samuel, U mentorishwa, U disciplishwa, Gu Eli on the issues. Nyaibonane? I want to talk about respect of persons. God, he is interested in fulfilling his will. And he uses whosoever is available. Mamelani Bazalwan, if she has a tan that Tina, Namandwa Nabetu, Nemise Benzietu, more than we love God, he will use stones. He will use the unlikely. 
He will use abantu abawileyo aba backslide leyo. Abantu sacasi bajonga si fish but they are disqualified. Because they had a walk with God. The person who was backslidden had a walk with God. There is a, there, there, there's, a, there's a story that they can tell you about God. You might find that the cares of the world or the things, the discouragement or whatever is what has moved them from God. Or maybe the, the state of their family or of their houses like U Eli has moved them from the presence of the Lord. But ikona iwalk. So we don't want that to happen in our time. We want to be people who are saying, We want to be people who are saying, Amen. So Eli is the one who says to to Samuel, when you hear the voice again, say, speak, my Lord, your servant is listening. I wonder today who is walking the journey with you to help you to be able to identify the, way, the voice of the Lord in your life. Or are you umzaranos goma mnandia mazutiko? Mnandia lazilu zilatiko? Mnandia mazutiko? Or is there somebody who can instruct you in the ways of the Lord? Who can say that this is God who is speaking? Be attentive. Amen. So we need to come to a place where we understand that we need to be planted in the house. When God is training us to become militant, to become an army, the tone changes. I want you guys to be ready. I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. I want Something very tough is coming your way. <laughs> and, okay. I see your cult, but you know, I want you to be ready. It's fine when we say, there's a father, there's a mother. Listen to your father. And it? And this here, understand, Alantone? Because it's utata kai teta, pula pula. Especially when you're, when you're at home and family. And I've got children. So when I speak, my children hear me. And sometimes they don't hear me. Well, sometimes they hear me. But when the fa their father speaks, I am the one who makes sure that they pay attention. Because I know that is this serious? They are serious, they are not serious, we are just talking. But the fathers, they've got times to say certain things that are very serious. That needs a person to be attentive and to take note. Even in the, in, in, when we talk about the bride and the groom, you know, and, 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 and God being the, the groom, Jesus being the groom when we are the bride, we know that when your husband, especially when you're a married person, when your husband speaks, it doesn't matter what, whether you are sitting with your friends. Ne? I, be, I would be sitting with my friends, and when my husband walks in and he looks at me, there are certain looks that I know that he's looking for something or he wants to say something. There's a look that he will give me as if that's light. Yeah, because you know. Yeah, even Yeah, like I'm a light in Jay, Abuli Sayo. But there are I'm a shallow as out here. And then excuse me, ladies. And then you are trying to say, eh, Tata, these women, Ubona Sikeli Apa. Yeah, even eh? Yes. You are not going to say, oh, hi, babes. And then you continue. And you look at the faces like, what's going on in my house? Oh, yeah, you know, girls, as the Lord has been saying, and my husband will be like, what's going on in my house? I can't ignore that. Amen. Amen. So it's the same now when we talk about the army. Yeah? There's a commander. Amen. A commander cannot come in 
and look. And the army is like, we are still eating supper. <laughs> There's a program on TV that I asked my daughters to watch because I saw it late. I wish I saw it at the beginning. Special forces. I don't know who saw it. Who saw it? Hey, I was on the TV. Baku TikTok on phone. This about ten days too. Baku TikTok. Baku Insta. Baku Twitter. Baku Facebook. About ten. Baku two. I'm ten days on. Baku Kelly TV. But. When I looked, because I, I just saw an end of it, and I'm like, what's going on? And my daughter said, oh, I saw it once. It's people who are civilians, who are training as armies, and, and, uh, in the army. And I'm like, what? The worst thing is that we just came back from the women's conference, and we were talking about an army. And one of my daughters sent me a message and said, Mama, don't you have books about an army? I want to study about an army because, hey, Kule season, God is really, really shaping us to become an army. And I'm like, yo, army books. Uh, I will have a look. But when I saw that thing, I said, yes. Girls watch. Hey, and my girls went. And they watched. And now they are giving feedback on the group. Yo, did you see that one? Did you see that one? And all. But this is what I realized. And this is what one of the guys said. Because they took the people who were training the army. Some, the, 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 um, the marine people, and then will say that, one of them said that, when you get into the army, the first thing that they do, they unscrew you, your head, and they take out civilianship, <laughs> and put it aside, and they put you the mindset of an army, and they screw your head back on. Because the truth is that, we are in the church, and we can wear military clothes and say we are the army of the Lord. Like my children were dancing yesterday. But when it comes to a lifestyle of an army, of a soldier, Assisi, we are not coming in plain English. Yes. Assisi, we did not sign up for that. Church is becoming too difficult now. Why must we have targets in the church? As if marketing, we have targets of how many souls to win. We are in the army. Yeah. Yeah, even, eh? If the commander says that we have targets, you tell me how many souls we are going to win in this season. As a soldier, you say, yes, sir, yes, sir. Amen. You don't say, but you must not clash. They don't understand that we have, to, you know, we, we've got targets at work. Sales targets. Then you are still a civilian. Amen. You are not ready for the battle. And here's the thing, Bazalwan. This is this is this this thing it really worries me. When it comes to Abazalwani and we say we are an army and we are saying we are militant, we are saying we are soldiers. Soldiers they sleep with one eye. When the door is kicked, they are awake. When they say we are going, they are going. They are not saying it's still three more hours before the sun rises. Uh, let me sleep three more hours. The, when the commander kicks the door and say, soldiers, let's go. They get... I don't think sometimes I think I know showerish. They don't think about say showerish and if I can make up, if I can go Yes, there's no time for that. It's time for war. And if they don't listen to the commander, they may endanger the whole army. This is what I realized, Paku Special Forces. I was like to my daughter, yay, yeah, I'm liking this program because most of these programs on TV, people are eliminated. But in that program, nobody was eliminated. People felt like, I can't take this and quit. 
They take themselves out. No, they say no. If you fail, it depends on how you take the failure. You can fail today and be a victor, vict, a victorious tomorrow because it depends on you, how you bounce back from the failure. Amen. 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 Am I preaching to the right crowd? Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to be soldiers? Yeah. It's going to depend on what you hear and how you hear and how you listen to what is being said. Amen. If we are not going to be able to listen, we are going to be the church that wants to become civilians. Okokoko. Sipamparisho. Okokoko. Singabantuana. Okokoko. With no level of wanting to grow. You have no time to think. What people will say to Abazalwan, we have prayer at 7 to 9. Abazalwan will, tell, will not come to prayer. But Barcelona will ask you to pray for them. I bet you are telling and soup. I'm not clash. Yo, I'm not clash. Look, Tandas, I'm talking about Tandas. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. The Tandas are listening. So, I'm not saying that. People will say, please pray for me. But they will not say, pray with me. Because prayer is not for them. Is for you as their leader. Hallelujah. Because they don't understand that when you are in battle, one of the warfare that we use is prayer. Amen. If you cannot become a militant prayer warrior, half of a battle is already lost. Because we fight in prayer before we fight in anything else. So if you um zalwane okonqena yo ukuthana and get I'm, I'm, my disciples will be like mama people don't attend prayer I said no it's the state of their own devotional life Hi got your mama say attend us and did you know it's difficult to pray alone it's easy to pray corporately So if you don't pray corporately it means that you don't pray alone it is more difficult to push in prayer on your own. When there's a corporate a gathering of Baba Zalan, it prayer iba lula, kuyenzeka. So, kau kona ina ukusanga nela na Baba Zalan kui prayer, ungum Zalan unga tanda zio, kakuaba. Leo, you can argue with as much as you want, but to me, I've concluded, um Zalan unga tanda zio, attend the prayers, um Zalan unga tanda zio. Let me say this to the young people. You guys have to take Isindos Gamoya very seriously. Those who are still in high school and are still going to go to Teshiar, we attack at Teshiar. Nibavil, Masa Teshiar, Rabban. My daughter has got a, a roommate who comes from another province. She told her when she came that in my province, in my territory, they don't know where I am. They know I passed metric, but they don't know how I passed. They don't know where I am because I can't divulge that information. Because I can't in this one. Because I can't tell people where I am, what I'm doing, where. So and then Tina, we are in the church. We are teaching our children. Amen. We are not teaching them to become militant in prayer to become serious about prayer, to become serious about the word, to understand the Bible, to know who they are and whose they are, to know how to stand when they are faced with demonic powers. I'm not that they come back from school, but my name mental issues. Did it for who? For the why. What, what is the mental issue? It's a new language. After COVID, as he has, 
issue. I can't continue because my mental what what. And I'm like, you need deliverance, babes. Yeah, go on, Chongat babes, you need to deliver this message. Beggy Santa, just cast something and then sip in the CNC, consolidation, so that you can understand the word, so that you can be able to stand on the word, so that you can be able to win the battlefield of your mind, and so that you can be able to take authority. You can never take authority in the spirit until you understand that you are in war. So, I'm going to go to tertiary. And then u uh, 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 rooms are condas lafuna yoksasa tikka a bathroom when you don't even wake up in the morning to pray. You don't have a devotional life. You don't even have a a a a, a um in in Tonile the Bible up or they tell you if journal that tells you guti nam sanjo funda and doni ep verse whatever whatever you've got nothing. You just wake up, you wash, you go to class. You are standing on nothing but the prayers of your parents. But you tell yourself that you are a Christian. There's war. There are targets. People are targeting you. People, there are, are philosophers, as Colin, the lecturers, as our Tetin, as Pambene, about God. People will bring confusion to your mind because you are not grounded in God. Those who are at tertiary, the battle is still not going to be fierce. You're going to go to M7 Zin, where people do things to get jobs. Yes, they do, they're not just paying money to get jobs. There are people who, their office is an altar, of a demonic altar. Under the desks, there are some mutis. There are some waters that are sprinkled in the morning when they get into their offices. When angum zalwani ge kama, hand this in this ukabe lok tanda zetawa ni ge tawa, and then you don't have a devotional life, you don't have an altar, you've never dedicated your office to God. There's nothing spiritual. You are not a priest. You are not wearing a priestly garment. M sebenzin. You are just a worker, and then you wonder why you have headaches. When you get M sebenzin, you've got a headache. You don't know what's going on. There are altars that are stronger than your altar. Because you don't understand that your altar must burn. The battle, Bazalwani, is fierce. And we cannot be a Bazalwani who are weak in the things of God. Who wants to convenient Christianity. You want to be umzalwano okuzao to see a vugango twelve for see a tandaza for the next three months. I love what your pastors are, are doing. As four a.m. prayers, as five a.m. prayers, they are for the militant. And I wonder how many people actually join. You may have three hundred people in the church and have twenty people or thirty people attending the five o'clock prayer because we love our sleep. What kind of a soldier love their sleep so much? That when the call is made, you know, when I watched that program, I realized that these soldiers, when they are called, they are not even called by name, they are called by numbers. <laughs> because your name is not important, you see. They are called by their numbers. Number 14, when they say number 14, number 14 doesn't matter what they are doing. When they stand up, they don't walk. They run. Amen. Amen. When, is a, when the call is made, what is your posture? How do you respond? What's your response? Is it dieza? Or is it dilapa? There's a difference between dieza and non-dilapa. Because who dieza is like, I'm still tying my shoes. They tie their shoes as they run. And they've got this thing, that big bag. I think they said it's 30 k's. I don't, I don't remember seeing the day when they opened that bag to take water. or It's just a burden. <laughs> it's just a burden. Just, it's just a hindrance. Yeah, even eh? Something that says it doesn't matter how heavy life can be. We soldier on. 
some of us, Bazalwani, when we are, you, you when we look at the 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 the, 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 the story of the of the parable of the of the of the sower, the, the the people, some of them, the cares of the world causes their hearts to be hard in a way that when the word is spoken, though they receive it with gladness. Because the normal on the sindayo, I can't run as fast. I can't respond as quickly because I'm listening to the weight that is pulling me down. But as soldiers, the weight is supposed to be what propels you to move forward. It's not going to be a hindrance, but it's going to be something that says, I am going to be victorious whether I'm carrying 30 Ks of nothingness. Something that I'm not going to use, something that is not important, something that is heavy, something that is painful, something that wants to delay me, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on the price. I'm going to focus on the call. Amen. Amen. So now, before I close, because I need to close. How you listen as a person, it reflects the state of your heart. And as I said, Abba Zalon, we don't like hard sayings. We, don't, we want nice things. When umfund is a teta hard, say akumba. Okay. Let me say this. Beware of the spirit of offense. Yo, I have to say it. As a, 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 a church that is an army, suba nentlizwe tambileyo. Intlizwe yako maengabi apapakat kwe sandla saku. Yabona ne? Ufman ba i fanesi nase. Because when we say something hard, you get offended. You get head. Our pastor was nice. He's, he was not like this. Can you imagine Jesus says to people, you brood of vipers. I man Jesus, you two camels when. Yeah, even eh? You are of your father, the devil. 